Hello everybody, it's Final Rich here with Vinyl Finds 180. I think when I get to 200, I'm shutting this down, dude. I'm going to start this off, though, with some VCLT I got from Martin Jones. Fantastic. Black Randy and the Metro Squad. Past the dust. I think I'm bone. This is a gatefold 2LP version. Now, this the Metro Squad included uh, this guy here, Joe... Nanani or Nani, he was the drummer for Wall of Voodoo. This guy here, Pat Ramirez, he was the guitar player for uh, the Eyes. Now I saw the Eyes in the Wall of Voodoo several times. The original uh, bass player for the Eyes went on, and she became the guitar player for uh, the Go Go's, and. Her replacement was the original bass player for Blondie. He left Blondie to join the Eyes. Boy, man, I wish he would have. He probably thinks, man, I should have stayed in Blondie. <laughs> Anyways, a quirky band. I mean, look at this dude, man. He's not your typical, you know, front man. He... Every, I don't know everybody, but people that know James White or James Chance, James White and the Blacks from New York, he had that funky uh, kind of soul, punk soul thing going on. Well, this guy was doing it before James Chance. And this guy claims that, yeah, James Chance saw us and he stole my whole thing. So two records set this one, and it's fantastic. The first one is the original album, and it's got the, the singles, I Slept in an Arcade, the Idi Amin. <clears throat> but the last two songs on uh, are Shaft, and what's that other one, man? Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Pretty cool, man. Really funky. Um, the shaft theme, they kind of speed it up. It's pretty interesting. But the say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud is pretty cool. Now, the second record, let me show. This is the first record, I guess. Yeah. And it's on Vinyl Countdown. They were originally one of the uh, original bands on uh, Danger House. Now, the second record on this consists of their singles, the A and B sides of their singles, and <clears throat> the D side, or the fourth side, consists of... Uh, a live set at Green Frogs. I don't know if it's the whole set, but it's pretty good. I was thinking, I was thinking side four was gonna kind of suck because it's a, it's the first part is a live set, and then the second part is a phone call. But the D side's kind of my favorite side of the bunch, man. It's fantastic. A really good, well recorded live set. And the phone call is pretty interesting. It's between uh, Black Randy and Paul Rat, who I'm, I I don't know. I I think Paul Rat. I thought when I he was a booking agent up in Frisco, but I think he was a member of an, another band. <clears throat> and they're talking about. I guess Black Randy was going up to San Francisco to play a couple of nights, like a Friday and Saturday. And they were discussing uh, what bands, you know, to include on the on the the bill, and it's it's a pretty interesting uh, conversation to say the least. And these are the it's got the words that are right up on them on uh, the first LP. This, these are the original sleeves, and then this is the sleeve on the second one. It's got some. 
flyers and then here's some pictures of him there he is right there and then there's the there they are rehearsing probably but yeah pretty cool <clears throat> now the next i think it's either four or five i should i think it might be five i got it going underground records more trade i've gotten got rid of some more classic rock stuff that some of it i i don't care for it anymore some of it it's good but i i just you know I, after i listening to it i go i'm not gonna want to listen to this again you know i mean it's probably been 30 years since i listened to it and i'm not gonna be here in 30 years so you know i'm done with it and there might have been some punk rock stuff or new wavy stuff in there but anyways the first one i'm going to show is the feminine complex living love looks like a bobby gentry album cover you know yeah, but if you look at the back here you're thinking oh wow this is gonna be a 60s garage rock you know girls from the garage classic you know now i saw this shown once in the VC, and it was a few years back. It was a young guy. I don't think he's in the VC anymore. But recently, somebody else showed this, and I can't remember for the life of me who it was. And I, I contact or I made a comment on his video. I just bought that out, man. It's kind of weird, you know, because this is not a common record you see. Now the first song, "Hide and Seek," comes out. Kind of psyche. Oh, the garage is coming. It's psyche. 60s sounding psyche. A little bit of garage guitars in there and that. And you're thinking, wow, this is gonna be this is gonna be a, a 10. Well the rest of side one is uh kind of more AM 60s sounding stuff. It's not bad, but it's not it's not what you were hoping for after seeing, you know, hearing the first song. Side two, I think, is a better side overall. Starts out with Run That Through Your Mind, a very fast rocking song. It's not quite psych, and it's not quite garage though. But it's really good. And that's how most of the site is. It's magic is the same thing. I believe it, it kind of has some psyche tinges to it. The guitars. I think it was the fourth song. That was the third song is also great. I don't want another man is another good rocking song. The fourth song though, Forgetting, was probably could be the weakest song on the whole album. It kind of sounds like a Davy Jones, one of those goofy Davy Jones from the Monkees songs, you know? I mean, it's not horrible, but... And then I've been working on using another good rocker, and then it time slips by. It ends with a really good 60s rock song with hints of guitar in it. I mean, guitar, of psych in it. Overall, man, I give this a big thumbs up, and I'm really glad I they had it there. You know, it's this is definitely a record that piqued my interest years ago. Because as soon as I saw it, I go, "Wow, I remember that guy showing that." And this is the label, Athena Records. I don't think I have anything else on Athena Records. And if I remember right, I know I I read up on them. It might be like a a record label in Memphis or Nashville or something like that. Now, of course, that obviously that was a used record. This next one was a new one that I pick up there, and it's uh, Temple Sun Structures. Now, I bought this when it came out on CD because I remember hearing on the internet that. The record kind of didn't sound as good as the CD. And I wasn't buying records then. This was a couple of years 
before I started buying records. And then when I started buying them, I was thinking about getting it. And I just, nah, I got the CD. That's good enough. <laughs> I was going to sneeze and man, I would have had to restart this because I don't want no sneezes in the middle of my video. Great cover. Great band. Their second album, I thought, blue. And I, I don't know, I kind of lost interest in them. It's a psychedelic sound. This is a, came out. When did this come out? 2014. So yeah, this was a few years before I was buying albums. I think I started buying albums around 2016. It's a psychedelic sound. They sound a lot like the end, the English, some of their songs. An English psych band from the 60s that Bill Wyman from the Rolling Stones produced. But yeah, it's a really good record. Now, I didn't compare the two. I didn't compare this to the CD, but it, it did sound, I could tell right away. This doesn't sound like how I remember the CD sound. It's a little more uh, muffled. I, I wouldn't say muffled, but there's not as much separation in all the, the instruments. That's what the record looks like. I mean, I'll, maybe the CD does sound better. I don't really play CDs anymore just once in a while in the car, and usually I don't even do that. So I'll end up playing the record more. Now the next one I got, so that's two from Going Underground. The next one I got at uh, Going Underground was a used copy of this. It, even, it still has the Going Underground price sticker, $10.99, and it's Chaos, a Finnish hardcore band. This probably came out in 83 or 84, and this is the Havoc reissue version. This is fantastic, hard hitting, punk rock, hardcore, really cool. Uh, the way it folds out and you just put the record in the middle. Here's a good picture of the band right there. Yeah. Really good, all in finish, just hard hitting. I dig this stuff, and this is one of the, uh, one of my favorites that I've heard so far from the Finnish. I have about six or so Finnish hardcore albums that I bought last this year, maybe the end of last year that I still haven't shown, and I, I'm gonna I'm gonna show them next week, next uh, final one because I can't pronounce this shit, you know. I can pronounce chaos, but yeah, it's really good. Really fast, brutal, hardcore music from Finland. Now this next one it was a new record, and I lost count. This is four, and this is a band from Bogota, Colombia, and it's in a similar vein as that Havoc or uh, that uh, Chaos. Really, kind of brutal, hardcore. And the name of the band is something United. Unida Ideologica. Probably United I Ideologies, maybe. It doesn't say the name of the band. It doesn't list the songs anywhere on the cover that I can see. But yeah, this is very similar to that chaos. Very, very fast. Hard hitting. Pretty good pictures of the band on this insert. And let me, anybody that's interested, you can look this record label up on Bandcamp. La Vida Es Un Mal Moose. And see if it's still available. This is the sleeve. This is the same as the cover, I think, yeah. Yeah, this is the cover, and then it kind of, the theme continues on the back side of the sleeve. It's uh, a beautiful red. It's a beautiful red. 
Really good, man. This is just as good as the Chaos. From what I remember, man, the vocals really great, and I really dug the drummer, man. Oh, here they are. Now the next one, this might be the last one I got there. Yeah, this is the last one I got for the records I traded in. And it's a bootleg, new, one of these, you know, the modern style bootlegs. And it's Misfits, and it's a Static Age Demos and Outtakes. Now, side one are the demos, and it's actually pretty good. It's, uh, the songs, they're slower, some of them are slower version than what was released on Static Age, and Static Age wasn't released until 20 years after it was recorded. But yeah, it's pretty interesting, you know, to have these different versions of the same songs. You know, hybrid mo moments, TV casualty. TV casualty is definitely was slower. We are one, three, eight. Very, it's definitely slower. I mean, not slow, but it was definitely slower. Side two though is recording sessions from the studio. Da 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 da, and it's more of a just the tape rolling and they stop and they talk and it's not. Side one, side two is nah. This is worth getting for side one. And like I said, it, it's it says here. I mean, Misfits Fiend Club, and it's rumored that Glenn Danzig is the one that's putting out all these uh, bootlegs. Because a lot of Misfits bootlegs, Sam Hain bootlegs, and even Danzig bootlegs are coming out and uh it's like why would dan zig do it maybe he just doesn't want to pay royalties to anybody else and it came with this poster i mean they're they're pretty elaborate most of these it's not essential but if you're a misfits fan side one of that is worth it's worth getting for i mean the, it's really they were never like a high tech band and it's the sloppiness, and it's not just sloppiness, just the sound, the fuzziness, and just the, I don't know, the overpowering loudness. There's one song where it just sounds like this. It's, it's kind of interesting. Now this next one I bought, this, this I bought quite a while ago. They just never got around to showing it. And it was a... Uh, Randy did wax 66. I, I don't think he watches my videos anymore. You know, he's probably busy. I think he is busy and uh, Cool guy And he was talking about these records They were I don't know if they were on discogs maybe or something Can't remember if it was discogs or eBay Might have been eBay and he was saying he asked me it was on a live stream He asked me have you ever heard of this band? I go. Yeah, I heard of them I, I even saw him once at uh, the Olympic Auditorium, you know, in one of those bills with eight to ten bands. And they didn't really stick out. And I think I have them on a, a couple of uh, comps. But anyways, he was going, yeah, uh, they're on sale right now on eBay or whatever it was. The albums are 20 bucks each, and he's selling uh, a single for 10 bucks. I go, okay, that's cool. So I went ahead and I got... Two of the albums, and I got this the seven inch. This is their uh, their first uh, single was "I Want to Live Like Yogi Bear," and this was the album that followed it up. I the Age of Aquarius it is, and the rumors are that there was only a thousand or so of these printed up, but they didn't sell very well, and that most of them were never sold. That was a rumor, and that kind of goes along with them set all of a sudden appearing on eBay for 20 bucks. And you can still get this on eBay or, or on Discogs, 20 bucks. It's kind of mid-tempo punk, some fast punk, kind of uh, goofy words, you know, humorous words. 
um, these guys could have been the the dead milkmen if they would have practiced more, you know? It's kind of like that, you know? It, it's really good. Much better than the dead milkmen. And this is what the labels look like. It's on Happy Squid Records. And I got one more by them. Stuka's over Bedrock. Back to the Stone Age. And got Barney Rubble there. Now, this one's listed as a comp. And what's cool about it, it has their first 7-inch, which it's rumored. I mean, that's been out of print forever. And it's rumored that one member left and he took the original tapes and he taped over them. But this, it's got the first single on here and it's got a whole bunch of other songs that I have no idea I, I think they all came from the same 1983 sessions and this one it's definitely not as polished as that one but I, I think I, out of the two I'm probably going to listen to this more than that one it's fantastic dude you got Life Like Yogi on here Bedrock Bed Hand my car is my God. And they do a, a careful with that axe, Eugene. And they even give Pink Floyd credit. But it, it doesn't, it, it's nothing like the uh, the Pink Floyd song. It's it's more like if you know the Descendants, uh, I Like Food. It's, it's kind of like that pace. But yeah, this is really good punk rock, dude. And that's what those labels look like. And I think this was released... That other one came out in 1983. This one came out in 2007. And it came with this insert. It's on newsprint. Oh, you know what? It's got all the words. Oh, and it does have a... It does have a write-up. Maybe I should have read that before I did this video. But anyways... Last song, last uh, record I got here, Bought Online, and it's RAF, a band from uh, Omaha, Nebraska. The bass player is Derek Higgins from the BC, one of the first, uh, there he is right here, I don't know if you can see it very well. Here he is in his rock god glory. This is a very fine musicianship, good players, guitars sound like 90s kind of to me, really good songs. I really like this album. And uh, I think it was like 20 bucks or something. I don't think... This red one's available anymore. There was only 130 of those. Yeah, very... One thing about Derek, man, he does know how to do the record deal because he's a record collector. Let me see this. Yeah, 92 out of 130 this is. Now, the thing about this, as good as it is, as great sounding it is, as, as it is, I'm probably going to listen to this more, man. This sloppy-ass mess, you know? But anyways, I dig this. I I have one other record by uh, Derek Higgins or a band he was in, Ment The Mental Health or something like that. And uh, I, I I have a 7-inch. I had three of his other more ambient type things, and I, I traded those in years ago. I just... They're, they're okay, but I'm not going to listen to them. So I just decided, you know. This I will listen to. It's more of my style. Punk rock. But anyways, take care, everybody. Hope I didn't go on too long. Go Dodgers!